Hey guys, welcome back to our channel. My name is Abigail, aka Fab Mommy, and today I want to talk about <laughs> I want to talk about an experience I had in the early years of our marriage. Um, it's an unforgettable experience, actually. And um, okay, let me just start from the beginning. <laughs> oh, by the way, if you're a new subscriber, you're welcome. We appreciate you. Thank you for subscribing and for our OGs. Thank you for watching, liking, and sharing our videos. God bless you. Okay, so to the topic at hand, there was a time I when we were newly married, there was a time I moved out of our <laughs> our house. I moved out of the home and okay where do i even start from okay then i was pregnant i was pregnant with our first child i think i was five months or six months pregnant so that particular pregnancy i was i was let me just say i was an emotional wreck like i used to be very emotional during the pregnancy, like any little thing, I'll just start crying. If I watch a movie and someone dies in the movie, I will cry. <laughs> it was very bad. That I'm always very kind of I'm always quiet because I don't want I don't want anybody to just do something or okay, but it was getting close to my birthday and I really wanted to celebrate that particular birthday. It was my first birthday as a missus, so I wanted something, you know, I wanted, I don't really celebrate my birthday, I'm not a birthday freak like that. But that particular year, I wanted something special, combined with the fact that I was newly married, I was pregnant, I just wanted something special for that birthday. So I was always telling my husband, I want these, I want cake, I want small chops, I want, you know, those paparazzi boats. You say, ah, okay, when we have money, like, oh, when and we actually broke at that time, <laughs> we were broke. Say, so, okay, and when we, if there's money, we'll do something. I like, not if there's money, we have to do something, you have to go and look for the money. <laughs> oh, mom. Okay, so we always arguing about it. Like, if there's no money, where will you be? I said you will look for it. I just wanted something, and I will get so emotional while talking about it. It will calm me down. Say, okay, okay, there's no problem. We will do something when we, if we have money. So, fast forward to two days or some days before the birthday. I went to him again. Do we have money? It was like there's no money. That. You want to just do the little thing. I I want cake. I told him I want cake. So that pushed me. I was I was feeling somehow like why would this guy be doing this? Can't he just look for a way to do it? I wanted him to go extra. I mean we had a lot of issues. Let me just say that when we were newly married the first year we we are having a lot of issues because it was like I didn't know the person I married, and it's expected because although we were close when we were dating, but we have not really lived with this person, seeing the person morning after the night, you know, waking up, eating. I don't know. I think so many marriages, the first year is usually very rough and rocky. I don't know about for some, but from research, the first year is usually like that because you're just getting to know the real person you married. So we had a lot of issues, especially about finances, how to manage money, what to spend the money on. We had a lot of issues like that. <laughs> I can't even begin to count the number of fights we had concerning money. Okay, and maybe some other things but money is always like the prominent one okay so as i was saying because it kept saying there was no money and we had um, a joint account like 
I know how money goes in and money goes out. So I just decided to check. Mistake number one, I checked this phone. Hmm. My dear sisters and brothers, <laughs> don't check your partner's phone. Like, you will see what you don't want to see. And at the long run, you will even be the one at fault because they will ask you, why did you check this phone? It's not your phone. It's a private something. But me, I felt we were married now, so why can't I check? I mean, I, I made a lot of mistakes in the first year of our marriage, like, especially with phones checking, with money. According my husband, the respect he deserves, you know, I was still thinking, actually, this is my boyfriend, you know. When you get into that marriage phase, it's another thing. They expect you to behave in another way. They expect you to give them the respect that they deserve now as the husband now not boyfriend again so that one is another story for another time let me just continue <laughs> what i was saying so i checked his phone and i saw that there was money in the account although not much but my mind was like ah this money can buy cake now this money can still buy cake or we can still go out from this money can go to the cinema or something so I just, my head wanted to explode out. Why is this guy lying to me? What does he think I am? Eh? Is it because I don't have money? <laughs> is it because I don't have my mindset? You know, I started thinking one, two, three, like, what, what's the meaning of all these tabadances? <laughs> so I just went to meet him. I didn't even wait. I didn't process it well. The way I was emotional and angry about the matter, I just went to my just barge into the room. I asked him again, you know, like you are you want to trap someone on them. I asked him again, do we have money? Do we have money in any account? Or is there like something we can just do so he said we don't have money at all? And I said we have money. You are lying. <laughs> You are lying, you lie. We have money. I checked your account balance. Blah, 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 blah. <sighs> That's how the matter turned to yam pepe, scatter, scatter. And just said, I just said ranting. I just said ranting. You are lying to me. When did you start lying? I thought you said we should we may have a joint account. I, I I show you all my earnings and how I spend it. We spend my own money together. And when it's your turn, you know you're keeping something from me. I just say ranting and ranting and you just get looking at me. And when I think when you eventually spoke, I was like, why did I check this phone? That who gave me the right to check this phone? That has told me a number of times not to check this phone. Why do I keep checking? This? That's not the <laughs> and I, I I had to defend myself. That's not the point. The point is you lied something something. So it just escalated from there and we went our separate ways and I was like my head I just said my head was so hot. I started crying, you know. I told you blame it on the hormones, guys. Blame it on the hormones. I was pregnant and I was emotional all through that pregnancy. So my hormone was just all over the place. My emotions were all over the place right now. So I can blame it on the anything that happened during that pregnancy. I blame it on the hormones. It's not me. <laughs> it's not me. Okay. So I was like, I was like, what's the meaning of all this stuff? I need to do something drastic. <laughs> I need to teach this guy a lesson. So, and he was in the room, so I went back into the room, I picked the bag, I said, put in my clothes, you know? That was my mind, I was like, you paid me to do I will not answer. <laughs> oh my goodness. <laughs> so I, I packed my clothes, and I just wanted to leave for like two to three days, just to clear my, my head. When I was packing, he was looking at me. I went out after packing, I carried my bag. I didn't say anything. I went outside. I was expecting him to follow me, you know, to beg me. Like, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Where are you going to? I'm sorry. I'm... This guy did not beg me. He didn't even stand up from where he was. So when I got out, I was like, ah, he did not beg me. Where will I go? <laughs> where will I go? 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 Where will I go
will I turn to? So I said, thank you. Should I go to our house? And then he's like, ah. But when I get to, what would I say happens? That I want to buy cake. Or that I check my husband's phone. Like, that one will not work. I said, okay, there's only going far. There's only going to Lagos. Let me just look for a place to stay. We have a family friend around the street. I can stay with them for a while or two, three days. So I decided to trek. I don't want to take bike for so I can think about this very well. I remember I was pregnant. I was carrying a bag. It was around six, seven. So it was already getting late. So then I decided to walk. I was on street and I just started thinking about everything that happened that. So I started asking myself, is this birthday so important that I will move out of the house? Like, is it really worth it? Okay, when I get to where I'm going to now, what would I tell them happened? Ah, I checked my husband's phone. You know, it just sounded summer. I know, you know, like, I'm trying to... It was important to me. The birthday was important to me. It was my first birthday, as in, like I earlier said. So, it was important, but yet, it wasn't <laughs> up to where yeah, I was taking it. It, I, I didn't need to move out of the house. So I just started thinking about it. Is it really worth it? Okay, what would I do? And I'm, I'm, I'm someone I don't really like um, inviting third party to my marriage. I don't like telling people that my husband did this, my husband did that. So if I get there, I will definitely have to tell them because they'll ask me what happened. So I just said, you know. The battle was now, how will I go back home? I've already moved out. How will I go back home? So at this point, I was already tired of walking, so I just stayed somewhere, shop outside. I just stayed there and I started thinking about my life. What exactly have I put myself into? So while I was seated, <laughs> that's how one vigilante came to meet me. At before that time, there were rumors of, um, not even rumors, there were robbing shops and breaking shops, stealing. So that's how the vigilante came to me saying that, Madam, I think we will be there with him. I believe the, he's watching you. I was like, watching me that what? <laughs> oh, I know I remember that people have been really paranoid about the stealing and everything. As I packed my bags, I carried my bags, I turned back, but I was now walking slowly so that at least he would go to bed. Do you know all this while, this man did not call me. I kept checking my phone, I can't believe he call me there, where are you? Because I was like, I'm pregnant. He cannot allow me just to go outside that late in the night. Okay, me. He did not even, <laughs> he didn't blink. No calls, no message. That even made me more angry, more devastated. Like, oh, so I don't even mean anything to this guy. So I left the, where I was. I was walking back home. I had to stay outside for long. When it was around 9, 10, I now came. I saw the door was unlocked. Thank God. If not, why would I have slept? <laughs> so I came into the house and slept in the sitting room while. He slept in the room. So try this. I don't know if he decided to look for me or when I was away, but I just felt like what's the point of everything? What did I actually gain from it? Nothing. And I've always made the mistake of I don't know. Checking your partner's phone is a no no. I think that was the last time. After that time I just determined that whatever may be the case. <laughs> I'm not going to do that again. Like, I'm not doing that again. Hands off, checking your partner's phone. You're going to see what you don't want to see. And it's just a matter of you don't trust your partner. Yes, I can actually say that. The first year I was not like I didn't trust him, but it was shaky. <laughs> shaky. And I'm someone that likes to know everything that is going on. Okay, so when he begins to ask, I'm always like, oh, I will go and find out. 
so that was just it so when i go back home that day i started to write a letter <laughs> um, i don't even know what came over me doing that i'm thinking about it now i'm like um, i have time oh. <laughs> I decided to write, I wrote a long letter about everything, how I was feeling, you know, I couldn't share it with anyone, so I just, I wrote it in, not like I was addressing the letter to him, I just wrote everything I was feeling at that point to him, and it was an emotional letter. If I read it out to you, you say, you will get emotional, <laughs> you will cry for me. <laughs> okay, so I just wrote everything I was going through at that point. And I kept the letter where you will see it next morning. The next morning again, I went out. Not like I had anywhere to go. I just wanted him to have time to read the letter without my presence. And when I came in, I saw that he was reading the letter, and we we sat down and spoke about everything. It was at that time. <laughs> it was at that moment I knew. Oh, he was actually planning a surprise birthday for me because i said that we're really married i didn't know that it wasn't so the surprise surprise even up to now he still does it any of my best he would tell me we're not doing anything and at the end of the day we'll do something we'll even if no matter how small we'll buy cake we'll do all this thing then i didn't really know that it wasn't so all those things sharp so he now showed me the chat he had with the cake vendor how they already picked the type of cake, the design of cake, and I just it was at this time I knew I fucked up. <laughs> of course I fucked up. <laughs> oh my god. So I just I knew I fucked up at that time. So it wasn't like what why would oh push me to the point of of is is cake that important that I will not move out of the house? I was just looking at me, it was really us, like because of cake, because of birthday. I also explained my like, because I really wanted this, and I'm not someone that I don't really fancy all those things. But when I do, I want it. If I want it, I'm gonna get it. <laughs> not like that, shy. So he showed, he showed me those messages and um the pictures the cake pictures and i was like oh okay i'm sorry but i was still trying to you know argue with him and make him realize that oh he saw me packing he saw me he said it wasn't his business that I, if i want to go i should go now then it was not in my father <laughs> oh my god so so at the end of the day we resolved we resolved it, but the birthday was already messed up because I now didn't even want anything for the birthday. We talked, but we did not resolve the issue. I think the next day was my birthday, so I just he was still moody and angry about it. I went out on my own. I took myself to the cinema, and it was boring though. But what would I do? I, I still did something for myself at the end of the day. Okay, so the lesson I learned from this <laughs> this story that I just told you, um, number one, don't check your partner's phone. Like, it creates a lot of problems in the long run. You know, it even makes you feel or look insecure. Like you are insecure. Yeah, you, you don't trust your partner, and it just escalates things. Don't check your partner's phone. If you need to know something, ask. That's why we say communication is key. Communicate with your partner, ask, and just I don't know, depending on the kind of partner you have, you know, believe in your partner. Trust trust is essential. In fact, if you don't even trust your partner, why are you married in the first place? So that's the number one lesson I learned. I picked up from that. Never again to check or snoop through my partner's phone. Say no no. And then number two, I learned to be patient. Like you know, this birthday would have been more beautiful than I made it look. You know, with the surprise coming in and everything. So because of my action, it just ruined the birthday. It's 
It was like the worst, most boring birthday I ever had. You get what I mean? So just be patient. <laughs> you don't know. It might be it might be a surprise. And even if there's no surprise, it's it's not the last birthday you do. You still have it's not even only on birthdays that you get to celebrate yourself or your partner gets to celebrate you. You have more things to celebrate like God's grace. You know, just be patient, take it easy on yourself. And then to crown it all, I blame it on the hormones. Yes, I blame it on it because I'm not, though I'm not a patient type, but I don't act like that. <laughs> I would just pack out of the house like that. But I blame it on the hormones. So spare me, have mercy. So I would blame it on the hormones and. I just felt like my partner should have understood where I was coming from and he should be more gentle. He should have been more gentle with it and everything, but no, I didn't get what I wanted at the end of the day. Another lesson I learned is that you should trust your partner, always trust your partner, not the kind of person you're married to. Trust his judgment and his decision, not always but depending on the situation okay just trust is very important in any relationship or marriage like we all know okay so when i asked him after we resolved everything and there was no um there was no malice again and we were cool with each other i asked him why he didn't beg me like when he saw me packing and he was like why should he beg he didn't beg me to marry him I didn't even know it. So if he had begged me, he felt like when another issue arises, I can pack again and leave and expect that he would beg me. That is not going to make that is a personal decision. If I didn't want to be married again, that then, then all is well. And that one made me like, what for me do? I will not move out of my husband's house. But actually, it was. <sighs> Actually, I learned my lesson. I learned my lesson, and <laughs> hopefully, we get to communicate. That that particular issue has helped us communicate better. Okay, and he has made it up to me in subsequent birthdays. He has really surprised me, and though nothing elaborate, but at least I'm always happy. You get. <laughs> I'm always happy and we celebrate this very well. So I think they're still trying to make up with make up for that past ruined birthday. So I hope you have learned a thing or two. I hope you've learned learned something from my story. Don't well laugh. So I hope you've learned a thing or two from my story. If you have, please click the like button like this video please subscribe and share thank you for watching i'll see you some other time bye bye